Security is top of mind for most people these days, both in the physical world and the digital one. One company making its business at the intersection of these two realms is Entrust Data Card. We're going to hear about how the company's Canada offices are key to securing some of the world's biggest financial transactions this week on Tecopia Live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Techopia Live. I'm your host, Craig Lord, the editor here at Techopia. This week, we are at the offices of Entrust Data Card here in Canada to talk about cybersecurity and its impacts in the real world. Joining me this week is the Vice President of Software Development here at Entrust Data Card, Greg Wetmore. And to his right, we have Joel Duel Dubois from Perley Robertson Hill McDougall. Thank you both so much for joining us. Joel, could you please kind of run over what exactly are the services that Perley offers to, to firms in the city? Sure, yeah. No, the firm, uh, we've been uh, working with the Ottawa business community for approximately 50 years. And we, uh, we've been working with uh, tech companies of all sizes uh, throughout the years, from startups to you know larger, more sophisticated firms to when they want to go public. And basically all areas of law, from our corporate department, litigation, employment, labor, and IP. Mm -hmm. And law has a huge impact on today's topic. We're talking about cybersecurity, and uh, specifically an Ottawa, uh, coming with big Ottawa roots uh, and trust data card. Uh, Greg, I would love to hear uh, for, from your perspective, you've been in the company for nearly two decades now, what is Entrust Data Card doing? How does it relate to this field of cybersecurity and securing our identification? So first, Craig, Joel, welcome to Entrust Data Card here in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. Entrust Data Card is a technology company. Um, we are the global leader providing trusted identity solutions to many of the world's largest banks, mm -hmm. governments, and enterprises. Um, Data Card started in the 1960s. We just saw Entrust Data Card just celebrated our 50th year in business mm -hmm. last year. Um, they started producing um, secure, scalable technology, producing payment cards, credit mm -hmm. cards, and bank cards. They built their business, um, expanded into other forms of secure physical identity documents, mm -hmm. passports, driver's licenses, uh, national ID cards. Entrust formed right here in Ottawa mm -hmm. in the mid 90s. We spun out of Nortel. Um, and we produced some of the world's first secure digital identity technology. Um, we produced the first commercial implementation of public key infrastructure. Mm -hmm. PKI is uh, some of the security technology that underpins secure communication on the internet. Mm -hmm. And we built our business into other forms of high assurance, secure digital identity. And uh, in 2013, the two companies came together and formed a new brand, Entrust Data Card. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I like about Entrust Data Card's story, as opposed to other cybersecurity companies, you know, you can often get stuck in the weeds of, oh, we're talking about firewalls and these layers of protection, like all these uh, terms. It's very hard to visualize, but there's this physical element to Entrust Data Card where you can hold your passport in your hands and uh, you know see the the, uh, the reflective technologies there. We can you can see the physical manifestation of this security. Can you tell me a little bit how, in this in this area this era of cybersecurity, how does the physical world kind of overlap with, with the online, with the digital? Sure, it's, it's actually the exciting piece of the synergy between Entrust and Data Card. Mm -hmm. And when you think about your most secure identity documents today, passports and credit cards, they all have microchips yeah. in them. And inside those microchips, there's a secure digital identity. Uh, and the transactions those identities participate in or enable are more and more starting to happen online. Uh, and so those chips and digital identities allow that to happen. And as you think about the sort of transition to mobile, um, all of those secure identities are going to have a mobile equivalent. Um, mobile payments are starting to grow. Um, crossing border, borders using your phone, mobile passport. Um, that's the future state for, for identity. Mm -hmm. And the technology is really converging across those two realms. Mm -hmm. Uh, another industry that is heavily disrupted uh, or, or adapting to cybersecurity demands is law. Uh, Joel, uh, could you tell us a little bit about how the legal industry is uh, adapting in this new cybersecurity landscape that we are living in? Yeah, well, I think as we heard, uh, you know, cybersecurity issues are, are ever-changing. Everybody who lives in the digital world, uh, so risk is going up. We're, 
we're all putting our, uh, our, our personal information uh, uh, out there. And so as the risk is constantly changing, uh, the same legal issues are, are also changing um, and uh, clients uh, have to face that. Uh, risks uh, for clients in the digital world, I mean, it can be various forms from a loss of an asset, such as being hacked, uh, or issues surrounding uh, a ransom attack, or even perhaps a, uh, a privacy breach, as, as I mentioned. And so um, it can have major ramifications for clients, uh, either internally for their own internal stakeholders, so employee information, for example, is one issue. And then you know, external uh, stakeholders, clients, third parties, if you're an association, for example, you know, membership information, sensitive inf information. And so what's changing, I find that clients are uh, for the most part, um, becoming more aware of these ever-changing risks and these issues, uh, and then it's to work with them in order to for them to uh, to manage those risks, uh, okay. to for for them to plan for the uh, to be aware of the issues, to plan for the issues uh, if, if if something does uh, go sideways. Okay. And one of the ways that uh, clients are or some more sophisticated clients that that, that are aware of the, the risks um, are turning to cyber insurance. And that's one of the ways that, uh, for example, that uh, a business can use to manage that risk. Mm -hmm. And uh, litigation, I know, is a, is a specific area of specialty for Perley Roberts and Hillman McDougall. Are there specific areas that companies need to watch out for uh, when it comes to litigation in the cyber world? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess it's the flip side for what I just said is is okay. those uh, those uh, clients and those businesses that maybe not be uh, fully uh, aware of the ever-changing risks and obligations, right? The legal obligations that they have to protect private information. Obviously, they want to protect their assets. Uh, and so the, the litigation issues uh, which I'm uh, involved with and uh, at the firm that we're involved with uh, often involve uh, businesses who haven't necessarily kept up with the risk, uh, invested in the infrastructure um, in terms of software, hardware over the years. They may be relying upon old technology, technologies that were developed when the risks were different. Um, and um, and then the whole other issue is is education. Uh, more and more, you can you know for for employees, um, uh, you can have the best um, you know hardware and software, but if you have an employee who responds to a phishing uh, mm -hmm. email or communication, um, uh, you know you, you're facing that risk. And and then the the other one that we've seen is um, clients just relying upon reassurances, for example of those they do business with. So for example, your bank, your bank will tell you that your funds are safe, but there are always some fine print as to uh, those issues. And so the, the, that's where the litigation issues uh, we've found uh, mm -hmm. are coming up. Mm -hmm. And I like that you mentioned education and, and awareness, uh, Greg. I'm wondering if that's something in, in your long career in, in this space, have you seen an increased awareness or an education around cyber risks or is there still kind of a, a, a misunderstanding of everything that's out there and everything you need to be protecting yourself from? I've definitely seen increased awareness. Now, for our business, compliance and, and maybe an, an aspect of compliance that everyone watching will be uh, familiar with, privacy. Those are huge drivers for implementing strong identity technology. Um, we, our customers are absolutely aware of their increasing obligations, their in increasing responsibilities. Um, to protect their customers, their employees' personal information. Um, and yeah, our, our security technology is, is an important aspect of our customer strategy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I want to bring it back uh, maybe for one last question for you, Greg, to, to the trust part of, of Entrust. Um, you, 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 you've been almost with, in, with the Entrust part of Entrust, Entrust Data Card from, for upwards of 20 years we were talking about, uh, and you've been doing that right here in, in Ottawa, in, in the Canada offices. Uh, how has the work here evolved over that time, and, and what, is it, what does work in these offices look like today? What kind of specific solutions uh, on, on the Entrust side are you, are you working on here at Entrust Data Card? Sure, so we have, we have just under 400 people still wow. in Ottawa. So we're a, a big employer locally. Um, we're really excited to be part of the Ottawa tech community. The tech talent that's here in Ottawa has is, is driven our business for 25 years. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about trust, that trust is, uh, is really evolving. Um, you'll hear uh, sort of a marketing term in the industry, zero trust, mm -hmm. which is um, you know, somewhat provocative, but what it really means is the, the traditional 
trust based on the perimeter of an enterprise's or, or a company's network is, is sort of no longer meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, as business services are delivered in the cloud uh, to customers that are mobile, to employees that are mobile, um, it becomes all about the identity. Mm -hmm. um, it becomes all about protecting the data as it moves across all of those domains and you can no longer rely on your, your corporate network as the defense or as the, as the trust framework mm -hmm. uh, for your organization. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to scare our audience or anything. Uh, we have spent a lot of time talking about risks and threats and things you need to keep your eye on uh, out in the, in the modern cybersecurity landscape. Uh, but it was really great to hear uh, both from the Entrust Data Card side what you guys are doing to, to secure these, these transactions, these, these identities, uh, both uh, online and in the physical world. And, and Joelle from, from Perley Robertson Hill and McDougal, what you're doing on the legal side of things to make sure your clients are, are equipped to, to handle uh, whatever is coming at them in the digital world. So uh, thank you both so much for joining us. It was great to be here thank today. Thank you very much, Greg. Uh, now, before I let you go, I want to take a quick moment and thank some of our sponsors, without whom Techopia Live would not be possible. I want to start with Number Crunch, offering virtual CFO services to SaaS firms. There's TD Bank, offering specialized programs for tech companies. There's the University of Ottawa, Faculty of Engineering, creating the next generation of technical talent. There's Stratford Managers offering services to help you scale up your tech venture. There's KRP Properties offering so much more than just space. Of course, we have Joelle today, here today from Pearlie Robertson, Hill & McDougall, a leader in business and tech law. Now, Techopia Live is not just this fantastic show. We are also available online at obj.ca slash techopia with daily articles covering Ottawa's tech scene. You can follow us on social, on Facebook and Twitter, at Techopia OTT. If you're watching us on YouTube, please leave us a like and a comment and subscribe if you want to see more of our weekly tech interviews. Apart from that, I just want to thank you very much for joining us for this week's episode of Techopia Live, and we hope to see you next week for the next episode.